I took an interest in photography really through my travels. I went to Cambodia and Vietnam in the sort of the early 90s and I had just bought myself a new camera. I thought, wow, this is, this is what I want to do. You know, if, if I can find a job that enables me to sort of do this for a living and get paid for it, then uh, I'd be very happy. I was trying to figure out the easiest way to get into the industry and I saw that as being in newspapers. I badgered. I just got down to writing letters and eventually got a, a job within News International uh, working at the travel, their travel department. I befriended someone at the Sunday Times and I just made it very sort of clear to them that I would do anything to get a job on the photo desk. You know, it, it, I would have made tea. It didn't matter to me and the money wasn't really the issue. It was just getting in and, and trying to get some experience. I moved uh, across to New Zealand where I made a, a change and I got onto the other side of the, uh, the camera and started taking the images. Once you have a job as a star photographer, it's such an amazing opportunity, an amazing job. You don't change. But as a photographer, you know, that there is definitely a sense you crave action, you, you want breaking news, whether it be, you know, some people like fires or, or photographing fires, other people prefer photographing anything from car crashes through to, you know, bank robberies. I heard something was happening over the, over the, over the sort of the airways. So I grabbed my gear and I kind of ran out to the, into this area where I knew it was happening. And I ran around the corner and sure, sure enough, this whole thing just unfolded. Uh, in front of me and police, the armed defenders had basically pinned these guys to the ground. I was the first person on the scene and I had a camera. That gave, gave me my taste. Now and then you kind of always try to get it back again, it's almost like a drug. <laughs> we had an enormous boat fire here in Auckland um, at, a, at a warehouse. It was the biggest fire Auckland has ever seen. I came away from the Beijing Olympics and I felt like I could, I could pretty much go out and do anything after that. I'd never covered anything on, on such a grand scale as the Olympics and as you know the Chinese put on a pretty amazing spectacle. Uh, I shot some stuff of Bolt so that was kind of a highlight witnessing that. Sometimes it's not only just about taking the picture it's actually about being there at the time experiencing the moment and knowing that you're going to be able to look back when you retire or you're talking to your grandkids and tell them the soul's there, you know, this is how it felt. You're witnessing the moment in history. There's so many moments of, uh, of sort of elation and so many moments of despair at the Olympics. And there are moments when you can be brought almost to tears. It can be quite emotional because you're really knackered, you know, you haven't slept for days, you're not eating properly. You're lugging enormous amounts of equipment around. You're covering two, three events a day for you know up to two weeks, and it's exhausting. There were times when I'd walk in to a photo room um, in Beijing, and you'd find photographers were asleep under tables. It's a grueling experience. I just came back from the London Olympics. I found London quite hard because there were so many photographers um, trying to get in on the action that you were very limited to where you could stand. You know, the 100 meter final, if you weren't in your spot at least three hours before the race, then you were gonna be struggling to get a spot. At the moment, the, the sort of photography that I'm finding the most challenging is portraiture. Uh, for me, I like the ability to go into a situation in that short space of time, time trying to come away with an image that defines who they are. There is no job quite like it. You get to experience a slice of life every day. That's what I love about it, is you go into a situation, you don't know what's coming your way. And sometimes you can be moved to tears, sometimes it can make you really angry, but what it does, it gives you a little, sort of, it's like a tiny little microcosm of life. As a press photographer now, given the state of the media industry here and around the world, you have to be able to adapt. And I think you have to be able to work across numerous platforms now. Uh, I've just started to embrace video. It gives you so much more uh, opportunity to, to tell a story. This is gonna be a big part of any photographer's future.